Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Today, pag-uusapan natin yung mga tinatawag na non-parametric tests, katulad ng man with me u tests, Wilcoxon sign rank tests, and the like. And kung kailan sila dapat gamitin. Okay? Um, this video will serve as part 2 ng video natin before na guide sa pagpili ng tamang statistical treatment. Dahil last time, hindi ko na-cover yung mga tinatawag ng mga non-parametric tests. Okay? At marami nagtatanong sa akin, no, kailan ba sila dapat gamitin? Kailan sila pipiliin over, say, for example, T-test, ANOVA, and so on. Okay? So in this video, I will cover kung ano yung mga common non-parametric tests tsaka kung ano yung mga counterparts nila sa parametric at kung ano yung mga guidelines kung kailan sila appropriate gamitin. Alright? First, pag-usapan natin yung mga tinatawag ng mga parametric assumptions. So according to um, the various references that I use, here are some parametric assumptions na dapat pa-fulfill natin. Okay? Especially when gumagamit tayo ng mga parametric na mga statistical tests, mga statistical treatment. Um, katulad ng T-test, ANOVA, na I guess you're familiar with. Okay? Una, normality. Kailangan normally distributed yung data. Hindi siya dapat skewed. Um, lalo na hindi siya dapat highly skewed. The data should be normally distributed. Meron tayong mga pwedeng gamitin na test to determine if the data is normally distributed. Halimbawa, yung uh, Kolmogorov-Smirnov test. Based on the result of the Kolmogorov-Smirnov test, you can tell if you have violated the assumption of normality. At if na-violate mo yan, that's one reason for you para gumamit ka ng non-parametric test over parametric test. Okay? Yan yung first. Normality. Na-violate ba siya? That's one guideline. Pangalawa, the dependent variable should be in interval level. Yung outcome variable, dapat interval siya. Say, what if, sir, yung study namin, yung outcome variable, ordinal. Okay? E di hindi natin na-fulfill yung second assumption. Okay? Gagamit ka ngayon ng isang non-parametric test instead of a parametric one. Kasi nga, hindi na siya appropriate dahil ordinal yung outcome mo. Eh. Later, meron tayong very specific example for, for this one. Pangatlo, equal variances between groups. Meron tayong assumption of equal variances. And ginagamit na um, one test na alam ko na ginagamit to determine if na-fulfill yung third assumption is the Levine's test. Um, applicable ito sa mga sa mga statistical tests na nagko-compare ng multiple groups like T-test or ANOVA. Okay? Yung idea dito dapat yung variance ng isang group ay same lang or malapit lang dun sa variance ng iba pang mga groups. Kunyari, boys versus girls, hindi pwedeng mas malaki yung variance ng isang group over the other. So to determine if equal yung variances, um, you can use the Levine's test. Okay? Ito rin yung tinatawag na homogeneity of variance. So dapat um, magkalapit lang, if not the same, yung variance nung mga groups na compare mo. Okay? Lastly, the assumption of independence. There are different ways to assure no, the, na fulfill natin yung independence. Una, uh, by the way, it means the data is not connected in any way. Sa mga between subjects design, kunyari magko-compare ka ng multiple groups. Okay, yan yung tinatawag na between subjects design. A participant cannot appear in more than one group. If ako participant ako, dapat kung group A lang ako, I cannot participate under or um, hindi ako pwedeng included sa group B or group C and so on. I can only be in one group, specifically in a between subjects research design. Okay? But what about within the group? Okay? Kasi kanina between yun eh. Making sure that the data in group A does not in any way affect the data in group B. Okay? Within the group, there should also be independence. The performance, the score of participant A in group A should not affect the participant. Should It should be independent sa performance, sa score, okay, ni participant B in the same group. Okay, so dapat merong independence sa data. Independent observations. 
Okay? So these are the four assumptions. If may na-violate tayo sa kanila, like normality, homogeneity of variance, okay, and so on, we can choose, okay, to use non-parametric tests, okay? Kasi pwedeng maka-apekto yung violation ng assumption dun sa outcome ng parametric test. Pwedeng hindi mag-significant yung result mo, for example. Okay? So, as an alternative, pwede ka gumamit ng non-parametric test. Kung may reason ka, enough reason ka to use it. First, we have here man with new test. Yan yung alternative ng independent samples t-test. Remember, yung independent samples t-test, ginagamit natin sila when comparing two separate groups. Kunyari, boys versus girls. Say, for example, we're comparing the two okay, on a certain variable. Okay, so nagpa-exam tayo kunyari sa kanila. Kunyari, mathematics achievement. But yung distribution for both groups, sabihin natin, magkaiba yung variance or say um, skewed na violate yung normality. So hindi ka makapag-assume ng normality, hindi ka makapag-assume ng equal variance. Uh, it is suggested that you use the man with me u test. And I believe meron akong separate video for this. I suggest that you watch that as well if you want to learn how to run the man with me U-test. Next, meron tayong dependent samples T-test. Yung common alternative niya is the Wilcoxon sign drug test. When do we use the dependent samples? Ito yung ginagamit sa within groups design. Tapos dalawa lang yung kinocompare mo. Kunyari, si, uh, ang ibig sabihin nun, same na tao pero dalawa yung score nila. Kunyari, pre-test and post-test. Okay, yan yung dependent sample. Yan yung ginagamitan ng dependent samples t-test. Kunyari, tumaas ba yung score ko after one month? Okay? Pwede mo gamitan yun ng dependent samples t-test. Okay? Same na tao, pero magkaiba yung, uh, uh, pero dalawang score yung kinocompare mo. Right? Now, what if na-violate yung assumptions? You can use, one test that you can use as an alternative is the Wilcoxon signed rank. Test the alternative for dependent samples t-test. What about for one-way ANOVA? One-way ANOVA is used if you're comparing multiple groups okay, on a certain outcome variable. Say, for example, you're comparing the effect of three types or three brands of coffee on alertness. Tatlo iba-ibang brand. Okay, tapos alertness yung outcome variable. And violate yung assumption, say nung um, homogeneity of variance or yung normality. Okay? You can use the Kruskal-Wallis H test. Okay? So one-way ANOVA used to compare multiple groups and then there are separate participants in each group. Okay? But if the assumptions are violated, you can use the Kruskal-Wallis H test. Okay, we also have here um, Friedman test. When do you use the Friedman test? Alternative siya for one-way repeated measures ANOVA. Okay, what, what do we mean by repeated measures? Uh, repeated measures ANOVA, okay, same lang siya, similar logic with um, dependent samples T-test and how it's different with independent samples. Meron kang, say, tatlong score or tatlong observation, okay, tatlong set of scores coming from the same group. At least three pala, no? hindi lang tatlo, at least three. No? Actually, pwedeng um, dalawa lang, eh, pero madalas kasi ginagamit ang ANOVA kapag tatlo. No? So to lessen the confusion, I'll settle with three. Kunyari, no? you will compare the mathematics grade ng isang section from first quarter, second, third, fourth quarter. Diba? Isang group of people lang yun, tapos apat na score. No? Apat na grade, first, second, third, fourth quarter. Normally, we will use the one-way repeated measures ANOVA but if there are violations in the assumption, you can use the Friedman test. And finally, the non-parametric counterpart of Pearson R is Spearman Rho, or the Spearman's coefficient. So, yung Pearson R, ginagamit natin usually yan to correlate two continuous variables. Say, for example, two interval variables, the correlation of self-esteem and life satisfaction. But what if our data is um, halimbawa, no? skewed? O kaya, halimbawa, the data is ordinal. So hindi mo pwedeng gamitin ng Pearson R. Example, um, the correlation of your rank in school and your rank in the board exam. So if we're talking about ranks, that is ordinal. It is not um, interval. 
So if that's the case, we will not use, we should not use Pearson R. Instead, we should be using Spear Monroe. Okay, so that is it, everyone, for our short video on non-parametric tests. I hope um, I was able to discuss the four parametric assumptions, and I hope I was able to, to discuss with you. Uh, I hope I was able to effectively cover the commonly used non-parametric tests. Thank you very much, and see you next time.